Hello, my name is Riley Wilkerson. I'll be working with the first question. So for the first question, it gives us a list of sequences for the primer at the end. And it tells us to put this in a, in a gel and then to have it go through um, separating it out. And so for this one, our smaller pieces are at the bottom and then our larger pieces are at the top because the smaller pieces are moving downwards. So the smaller pieces are going to be at the, the front of the sequence and the bigger pieces are going to be at the, um, the, well, the top. So the bigger pieces are at the top, smaller pieces are at the bottom. And what that means is that in our sequence, when we replicate, we're going to get the opposite. Um, sequence from our primer. So we have our first one's going to be C after the primer, which is G to C, and then T to well A to T. It's just it's just going to go up that ladder until the very top. Um, and then for B, we have suppose that so all these are wrong. Suppose that E. coli DNA polymerase one is used instead of the the tag TAQ polymerase. So the TAQ polymerase is used to the temperature change, whereas the regular polymerase is not. So the regular polymerase would denature, thereby not creating any new DNA. And so that one would not work. Uh, whereas C, suppose that we add helicase to this process. Well, the helicase would just denature and we would see no change with it. Um, and then for D, for D, we're adding the um, dinucleotide, the DD, the dideoxyribose, the dideoxyribose, the DDATP. And we're only using the ATP. We're not going to be using the GTP or the TTP or the CTP. And so when we use the, well, when we do that, um, all the strands are going to be the same length for all the other tubes, except for our DTATP tube, where it'll look normal, where every sequence will have a T at the end of it, well, an A, an A at the end of it. And that is it for number one. All right. <laughs> All right. So I'm doing number two. And um, it's just fill in the blanks. Um, so part A says during a typical PCR cycle, the DNA synthesis step is done at 72 degrees Celsius while the annealing step is done at 55 degrees Celsius. Uh, B amp R is a common selectable marker that is found in many plasmid vectors while restriction enzyme recognizes and cleaves DNA molecules at palindromic sites. Uh, C, during agrose gel electro electrophoresis, DNA is placed in an electrical field. DNA migrates towards the positive electrode during electrophoresis. D is DDATP lacks two OH groups and three and the, sorry, it lacks the two OH group and the three OH group. Part E, transformation is a term used to describe the process where bacteria um, takes up DNA molecules from the environment and F during blue-white screening, IPTG is commonly used to induce the expression of the lac operon, while XGALI uh, is cleaved by um, beta-galactosidase to turn E. coli cells blue. I'm Hadley Pinder, and I'm doing number three. 
Okay, so if you look on number three, we're giving given two strands. And part A says, write a single-stranded DNA sequence that you would use for the two primers used in the PCR experiment. Note that each primer should anneal to one of the sequences in bold. So because we read from three prime to five prime, it'll be the two bold ones on those ends. And then you take, um, like, what's that called? You know, like magic, but it's not the same. Complimentary? Complimentary. <laughs> <laughs> um, version of it. So for the top strand, the primer will be, oh, that's a terrible word. I think I should choose a copy. No, you can't see that world either. Well, okay, so. It's three prime. T C G G A. So this is the top strand, and this is the bottom strand. Five prime. G A. G C C T T C A C T C A G. Okay. So that's the answer for part A. And then part B, what we're supposed to be figuring out is the annealing temperature for each primer. So we're given the equation um, a 81.5 plus 40 oops, 0.41 times the percent GC minus 675 over N. So for the top strand, the GC is 50%. And for the bottom strand, the GC is 56%. And then the N for both of them are 16. So then it's just a matter of plugging it in. And you should get for the top strand 59.8, the bottom strand 62.4. Um, then for part C, it says each PCR cycle contains a DNA synthesis step. What are the sequences of the two newly synthesized strands? The DDCTP is accidentally included in the PCR experiment. Assume that the DATP and the DTTP and the DGTP and all other appropriate PCR components are found in the reaction mixture. So because it's the DDCTP, it stops at the C. So when we're working backwards on the strand, um, so we read from three prime to five prime, we would have this for the top one. Oh wait, I think this is for the bottom one actually. And then the other one is G, 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 A, T, T. A, G. And those are the strands that we get. Then with D, it says, when we learned about the DNA replication in E. coli, we learned about DNA A and DAM. Why are these two proteins not included in this experiment? Because um, the function of these two proteins um, are taken care of during the first heating stage of PCR, so they're not needed in this reaction. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm Donovan Woodson. I'll be doing four. So four gives us a chart with a whole bunch of restrict, uh, digested DNA fragment links, and it wants us to make another gel. Oh, that, that is a terrible marker. That's okay. We're going to stick with it. So first,
it tells us that we've been given a marker. Um, a marker. A marker. Hey. <laughs> that has the base <laughs> pair links. Um, so this will be our marker. I'll do it with an M. Of a thousand, I think. Yeah, right here. Five hundred, and then four hundred, three hundred, two hundred, and one hundred. So that's kind of what our marker is going to look like. Then with the first uh, digest run, we have a base pair of fifty, or a length, fragment length of fifty base pairs, way down here, and then. 350 right about here and then 500 run two that's the two i promise we've got 200 and 700 up here somewhere three 300 again and 600, somewhere below 700, but above 500. <laughs> Four. We're back down to 50. 100. Uh, 250 and 500. 250. 500. Yeah. Um, then again, we've got. I think I skipped one. So this is actually five. Just kidding. And I'm not going to redraw it, so you just got to go out of order. <laughs> Four is 50, 150, 200, and 500. And then six is 100. Two hundred, six hundred. So the gel is going to look something like that. It's kind of hard, especially when you get out here, because the marker is way over there. But that's what we got. So for part B, it wants us to draw a linear, like the fragment and stuff. So I guess I'll leave that up there. So our linear fragment, I don't know, I'm not, because I don't know where to put it. Erasing this. Our linear fragment is going to look like this. And you just kind of have to logic out how it's going to look. You can do a whole bunch of steps to get here, or you can just kind of do what I did and went, well, if that was 250 and now this one's 1 in 150, 1 in 150 is going to get cut in half. <laughs> so basically, you have a cut here by BAM. And you have 50 base pairs here. Then you have 150 base pairs. And then it gets cut by uh, E. Corey, I think it was. Then you have another 100 base pairs where it gets cut by Hindi. Yeah. And then 100 base pairs, you get another BAM cut. And then the rest of it's 500 base pairs. And that would be. So for part C, it wants to know what base fragment links you're going to get. Well, you're going to get a 50, you're going to get a 100, a 150, and a 500. You don't include both 100s because when you run a gel, they're all just going to fall in one line together. 100. I'm Christina Crafts, and we're doing five. So it's asking, what are the different steps? Actually, I don't really know what it asks. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta read it. Um, so detail the steps that you would use to generate cDNA from your favorite mature <laughs> mRNA, and then clone a cDNA version of your favorite gene into a plasmid vector, and then use blue-white screening to identify plasmids that contain the white. FGC DNA. And so for purifying first, if you're, um, to purify mature, that's number one. Then two, mix the mRNA with the primer. And then three, add reverse transcriptase and DNTPs to synthesize the strand of DNA. Four, add RNA H to digest the uh, majority of mRNA. And then five, add a DNA polymerase one to synthesize 
um, second DNA strand, and then you move on to cloning. So for plas number one, it's um, the plasmid and chromosomal DNA are digested with um, restriction enzymes. For two, cleaved plasmid and uh, chromosomal DNA molecules are mixed together. Then three, DNA ligase is added. Four, transformation of cells where recombinant vector is added to come um, competent bacteria cells. And then five, growth of bacteria on medium that contains ampicillin plus IPTG and XGAL. And then the next part would be identifying colonies that contain an insert with the blue-white screening. And so the since you already have it grown, um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it's distracting me. Since you already put it on the growth plate that contained the ampicillin, IPTG, and XGAL, you're already halfway there. The recombinant vectors without the insert are going to have the LAC-Z, and then so they're going to produce B galactosidase. And the recombinant, oh man, I can't say it. Recombinant, how do you say it? Recombinant, recombinant. recombinant vector with insert. With, with the insert, it's going to have no laxy, so there's going to be no B galactosidase. And then the IPTG is an inducer on, so when B galactosidase is expressed, the no insert one, it's going to be blue on the plate. And then when B galactosidase is not expressed, which contains the insert, it's going to be white. And that's it. Woo! Okay. <laughs> I brought that in. <laughs>